and we think this is single, we think this is single, and those are the ones you can immediately eliminate, that they don't have any, any chance whatsoever. There'll be some obscure cut on that album they, they hate, and that'll sell three million copies. Yeah. They, they just, they don't understand that. They're just not uh, commercially oriented. They don't understand uh, where to go with their stuff. So, uh, and that's universal. It's almost true with everybody. Now, I think the Beatles were pretty good at figuring out what the singles were, but George Martin had a big hand in that. Yeah. And George had a lot to do with their success. Did you ever go to uh, Abbey Road? Did you ever go to London? No, I've never been to London, but I've been all over France, and uh, I, I, you know, I, I didn't really have a desire to go. There was. Uh, wow. The, the engineer on that first Beatles session at Abbey Road said that you know they asked him to engineer it because the other guy had something to do and uh, yeah. he said he was there with the uh, with his assistant engineer and they walked in and he looked at the assistant engineer and said what the hell is this long hair you know and, and they said Jesus Christ and, and they didn't play that well the first time and they had to come back the second time in order to get please please me done and a couple other things get it done the first time. In fact, they didn't get it done so bad that George Martin told them, you go home, we'll come back in a week and try again, but if you don't get it the second time, I'm done. I can't stay here until you guys develop into artists. And, and uh, they came back, and I don't think Martin was even there for the second session. I think the engineer produced the second session, and uh, they were a whole different band. They were tight. They were rehearsed. As he said, Martin would later say, he said uh, they'd obviously burn the midnight oil. He said, you know, they had been working real hard to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And Martin didn't like uh, Ringo from day one. Wow. He said, um, he said he can't do a decent role. He can't do a decent role. He, in order to have a good drummer, we got to have somebody can do. So on, uh, I think it's Please, Please Me. Yes, I do. In, or, in, in order to have a single here, we got to have a decent role, so I'm going to bring in a studio drummer. So there's two versions of, I, I, of Please Please Me rolling around. One's with the studio drummer, and the other's with Ringo. Wow. So uh, and Ringo thought, oh my God, they're going to do a Pete Best on me. You know, Pete, Pete had been the drummer up until... Uh, but he was better. Well, it, it, according to some people, he was at certain things, for sure. Ringo learned on the job. Now he, he had been a drummer for uh, Rory Smith and the Hurricanes, and when George Martin said, uh, I don't want Pete Best, and so they said, okay, and they fired him, and by the way, Lennon got the shit kicked out of him for that. Everybody in Liverpool liked Pete Best. Yeah. He had fist fight after fist fight after fist fight over <laughs> fired. <laughs> he said he walked around with two black eyes for like three weeks. Lip cut and everything. It was just terrible. <laughs> but they, they, uh, of all the drummers they knew, they thought Ringo was probably the best of, of the lot. So they went up to where the Hurricanes were playing, and it was someplace out of way out of town, and they somehow or another got a ride out there. And in front of... Probably Manchester. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but it, it, you know, in front of Rory Smith, uh, they, they offered him the drumming job. Yeah. And they and, and, and Ringo said, why do I want to do that? And they said, well, because we got a record contract. He said, oh, you're going to make a record? He said, and Roy Smith looked at Ringo and said, if they can make a record, I can't offer that. I offer you that, so I think you ought to take it. Yeah, that's so, right. So he's